So I want to pick up with where I had ended last time, which is to look at second order systems, right? So if I had a second order system, I can discretize that guy as well, all right? And to do that, we use something that we call state space analysis, which is kind of what I'm going to talk about a little bit here, which is to say, I want to turn this into an equation with two, basically two equations, right? Which I can do that. I can turn this into a, to, to a system with two equations. So when I look at this right here, um, I want to, I want to basically say if I had, you know, again, this could be some sort of a circuit or whatever the case may be. What I want to do is I want to say, well, what happens if I took this guy and I defined it as some variable? So the dy by dt, I want to define that as some variable. So let's call this guy, I'm going to call it y2. Okay. I'm going to call that y2. So I'm going to write this guy like this first d squared by dt squared. So I'm going to write d by dt. This is the first derivative of the first derivative. So I'm going to write it like that. Plus b times dy by dt plus c times y is equal to x. All right. <clears throat> that should make sense to you how I got from step one to step two there, right? Basically, at the, the, the second derivative has been written as the first derivative of the first derivative, okay? And so when I look at this, I have a d by dt of, if I define dy by dt as y2, how can I write this expression now? Yeah, put my, yeah, put my y2 in here. And then I can write this as a y2. And then I have cy equals x like that. Got it. So what I'm going to say is I can define this as a system with, with two equations. So here's, here's, let's go over here. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to basically create two new variables, y1 and y2. All right. Y1 we are, or sorry, y2 we already created. We said that was the derivative. Now, y1, I'm going to say, is equal to y. I probably don't even need to do it, but I just wanted to have both of them to have subscripts, okay? So that means I'm going to rewrite this guy as d by dt of what, this is what we already wrote, d by dt of y2 plus b times y2 plus y1 is equal to y, so c times y is equal to x, like that, all right? I'm going to call this y. Oh, oh. Call this y1 like that. Now, <clears throat> what I've done, so remember x, this, this, there's so many variables here, you guys get confused, but x of t is a known thing, typically. That's an input that I'm given, some sort of a voltage source or current source in a circuit, right? y2 and y1 are both unknowns. So can I solve a system of equations with one equation and two unknowns? No. So, so what do I need? Another equation, which I have one already, don't I? Here's an equation that I made, right? I can say that the other equation I've got is that y2 of t, y2 of t is equal to dy1 by dt. These form a system of equations for me. All right, that's one system of equations that allows me to define what's going on in a second order system. And if you, if you look at this, it looks like what I have is basically now two first order equations representing the one second order equation. And this, this problem could be set up in matrix form if I really wanted to, right? So I, I could set up something essentially in, in matrix form that would be this exact problem. And I don't want to do it that way because I think that's probably more confusing for a lot of you guys. But I could basically set this up if I wanted to as something that goes into matrix form, all right? Um, but I won't, okay? What I want to do is I want to take these two equations and figure out how it is that I would discretize them, all right? How would I discretize these two equations? So what was the key thing that allowed us to go and, and make discrete equations? What did we, what did we say? And I guess I'll put it here. What, what allows me to take D, let's do dy1 by dt. What allows me to make that discrete? 
the definition of this guy was the limit of delta t goes to zero of what over what? What goes on top? What goes on bottom here? Uh, y of t plus delta t minus y of t over delta t. Yep. All over delta t like that, right? So, and I called it y1. All right, and so the, the big step for us was to say, well, that's approximately equal to the same thing. All right, it's approximately equal to this. Under what constraint? What's delta the, t is sufficiently small. Delta t is sufficiently small. The problem with this is, again, what we talked about even earlier today. Delta T being sufficiently small is not necessarily the easiest thing to answer, right? Because in some problems, Delta T could be one second and some other problems, it could be one microsecond, right? So sufficiently small is defined by the nature of the solution. All right. And so you got, you got to think a little bit about what you expect the solution to be in order to make that choice reasonable. Okay. All right. So, we're going to go through and try to see if we can, we can kind of understand this a little bit. All right. So what I want to do is I want to utilize that approach here. Okay. So this was the system of equations that I got myself to. And so what I can do is I can say, well, let's let dy1 by dt be approximately y1 of t plus delta t minus y1 of t all over delta t. And let's let dy2 be defined the same way. All right, so I've got y2 of t plus delta t minus y2 of t all over delta t like that. Can you explain how you got to that again? How I got to, to what? To those two equations. Well, I mean, basically I'm taking the definition of the derivative, right? So, so this is our definition of a derivative. Basically what it, what, it, what it says is I've got a slope, right? So if I've got a mm -hmm. function that looks like that and I'm getting the slope between two points, I'm basically trying to connect them with a line and I'm trying to make that, that delta T get as small as possible. Okay. Now, by, by Newton's kind of definition, right? I made delta T so small that it was, it was basically zero, mm -hmm. but it, you know, in a computer, I can't do that. I, I need to make it small enough. And we saw that here, right? If I, you know, so if I tried to do this problem here that we were talking about, if I made my delta T too small and I wanted to make the plot for 50 seconds, I, I would need 500 million points. Gotcha. And that's, that's more points than I need to be able to see the function well enough, right? I can actually see the function well enough with 50 million points, okay? And that's kind of, that's what the, the it was the problem, I guess, that um, Philip said there, delta T sufficiently small, right? <clears throat> I could go too small, right? So, it, so it's a question of a balance of not being too big, not being too small, but being just right, okay? Um, and so, so the, you know, this, this is true. Basically, the only, the only way this can be true that we're accurately representing the derivative all right, is to say that the delta T has been made sufficiently small. If it's not, then I get something like what I showed back here, right, where I had, like in this case, if I chose this bad choice for my delta T, then I get a really inaccurate thing. And, and, and it's not true that I've approximated the derivative properly, right? I've, I've, in, I've approximated it improperly. And this, this assumption that I made that this is true is no longer valid. If my delta T is too big, this is no longer a valid approximation. Okay, does that make sense? Now, aside from just one, using reasoning to look at it and two, doing a lot of guess and checking based on what seems reasonable. Is there like any more precise way to calculate what would be a good delta T? Nope, not really. You know, it's, there, 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 is, there is a methodology that we could begin to think about that's based on something called the Fourier transform, 
we haven't talked about. But engineering intuition should guide you to a good choice. And I wanted to, I wanted to do it from a viewpoint of engineering intuition, because I think that's, at the end of the day, engineering intuition is really valuable. Now, what I suspect you may do a lot of is guess and check. And so you guys may do this a thousand times with a bunch of different Delta T's, all right? But my hope is that as you do, after you've done it maybe three times, you'll start to go, wait a minute, what do I expect it to look like? All right, that's, that's what I'm hoping will happen. Couldn't you uh, just graph it on your calculator and like fit the function and see kind of where, you know. So can you range. use, so that same old thing. Could I use a calculator to tell me what a calculator is going to do? I guess, you know, you could try that. Um, if you know how to, if you know how to make your calculator uh, solve a differential equation, I guess you could try that. Um, I don't know how you can do it. Maybe you can. Um, you could, you could generate the solution. You could go through the process of generating the solution by hand. And you could, you could then put that into your calculator if you wanted to. But again, I think you guys know enough and you're smart enough at this point that you should be able to reason intuitively about what it's doing. Your calculator behind the scenes is having to, to, to make some selections here. I don't know how good it does at making the selections. I don't, it's been a long time since I've used that piece of junk calculator to do anything, right? But you could, you could, you could probably come up with a way to do it. Um, but I, if, if that's what you're doing, you're gonna spend, a, you're gonna spend a while doing it. And my, my guess is it's not really gonna be that valuable to you in the end. All right, you may disagree with me, but <laughs> we'll see. All right, um, all right. So let's let's keep going with this, right? So I I got these approximations. I dumped them into into these equations, and so that means that let's take a look at the bottom one first here, because that one's a little bit easier to deal with, right? Basically, I'm going to have y one of t plus delta t minus y one of t all over delta t is equal to y2 of t, all right? So what I did was I combined this approximation with that equation to get to this. So again, that, what that tells me is I can get myself to an algebra equation again, right? So what do I wanna solve for here? What's my goal here? What, do I, what am I solving for? What do you mean what you're solving for? Like, are you solving for y of two? Well, so, so if I'm trying to go through this process, right? So what we did last time was. Well, in the end, in the differential equation, we want to find y, which is y1, right? Yeah, we do. But so let's look at what we did last time. Basically, what we said is for the, for the first order thing, I basically wrote out an equation that said the value of y at the next time step is equal to this algebraic result that depends on x, the input at this at the current time step, and the output at the current time step. Okay, so I have that relationship. So I basically I want to do a similar sort of thing, right? So what would I do here? So I mean, you could essentially solve for the same thing again, right? You know, the solve for y one of t plus delta t. Yep, y1 of t plus delta t. And then I want to solve this guy, the other equation, for y2 of t plus delta t. And so I'm solving at each time step for two different things. So y1 of t plus delta t is equal to y2 of t times delta t plus y1 of t. All right, so I did two steps of algebra there in one step. All right, but it should be fairly clear what, what I did. All right, all right. So here, what about this next one? So I, I, it's basically I've got, if I, what this says in words is that the value of Y1 at the next time step is equal to, or depends on whatever I have right now for Y1 plus whatever I have right now for Y2. Okay, so, so it's that statement. Now, what am I gonna solve this guy for then? What am I gonna try to do with him? I'm gonna try to solve for what there? It's 
So if I'm if there's two if there's two equations here, right? One of them is basically solving me for y1. What should the other one solve me for? Y2, right? So I, I'm going to plug in here y2 of t plus delta t minus y2 of t all over delta t. So that was this term right here. Okay. So I just took that term and turned it into this expression. And then I say plus b times y2 of t, all right? So I just copied that expression over. And then I add to that c times y1 of t and set that equal to x of t like that, all right? So I basically just rewrote this expression here, just moved it over, all right? Just moved it over and replaced the derivative with that approximation, okay? All right, now, what do I need to do? I need to solve for y2 of t plus delta t, okay? So what, would, what does that mean? So first of all, I, just, I guess I'll do it like this. It's going to be y2 of t over delta t, and I just move everything over, right? So I have x of t minus b y2 of t minus c y1 of t like that all right and then i gotta then i gotta rearrange everything and solve for y2 of delta t or sorry y2 of t plus delta t like that so i, I gotta move stuff over to to, to to finish that so it's just more algebra right i don't want to go through the steps of the algebra and the end of the day i get this all right once i've gone through that whole process i'm left with two equations that will solve for me basically <clears throat> two things. This guy here is solving for me the derivative of dy by dt. This guy is solving for me what y is, okay? Because our original definitions were y1 is equal to y and y2 is equal to dy by dt. So I need to, basically what it's saying is at the end of the day, what I care about is what is y, right? That's what I, what I care about. But I, I had to break it up into two separate equations to be able to handle the second derivative. If I had a third derivative, I would need to get three equations that kind of come into play. All right. So with that in mind, what do I 